Hebrews chapter 1. In verses 1 through 3, we have the introduction to the book and a beautiful passage concerning the Son of God. Notice what the writer said. He starts with the word God. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. At various times, different portions and different ways, God spoke. Sometimes He spoke through dreams. Sometimes He spoke through a small voice. Sometimes He spoke audibly. Spoke in many different ways. But look at verse 2. But He has in these last days. We're living in the last days. And God has in these last days spoken unto us by His Son. Not through angels, not through prophets, but in the last times, God spoke to the human race and gave His final message to man by His Son. Notice what He said. Whom, I was talking about the Son, He hath appointed heir of all things. We think about an heir to the throne in England. But think about the heir of all things. He has appointed him heir of all things. By whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of God's glory, expresses God's effulgence, God's glory, the brightness of God's glory, the expression Express image of His person. This Greek word means a stamp or a die. Jesus is the exact image of God in every way. Therefore, He is divine being the express image of His person, God's nature. He upholds all things by His powerful Word. Everything is held together on earth and in the universe by the Word of God's Son. He upholds all things by His powerful Word when He had by Himself purged us from our sins and sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high. Isn't that a beautiful statement about God's Son? And then when you go to chapter 2, verse 1, because of those things, in Hebrews 2, verse 1, He said, Therefore we ought to pay the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and sure in every transgression received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first was spoken by the Lord, is confirmed unto us by those that heard Him, God bearing them witness with signs and wonders, various miracles of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. Since Jesus is who He is, the very Son of God, the divine Son of the God of the universe, when He speaks, we listen. doesn't matter what our personality is. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what we feel. It doesn't matter how we are inclined when He speaks. We listen. When He commands, we obey. Anything in our lives that needs to be changed for Him, we will change it. We have become new people. We are the reflection of God's Son on this earth. 
Think about the beauty of his life. We looked at Matthew 4.23 this morning. He went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Everywhere he went, he brought joy and happiness. He uplifted people. Everywhere he went, he brought such joy to human beings who were in such sorrow. You know, that's the way it ought to be with us as His followers. Do we bring joy and comfort to those we're in contact with? Do we bring joy to them? Many of you in this audience do that. You bring joy and comfort to people and thank God for you. Thank God that we have people like that who bring joy and happiness to other people. Many of you are just a joy to be around. And that's what Jesus was like. That's the kind of person He was. Let's think about His miracles. It says in Matthew 4.23, healed all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, the word all is emphasizing. None of this stuff like we hear today. Well, we can't heal this person because there's unbelievers in the audience. We can't heal this person because they don't have enough faith. You don't read anything about that when you read about Jesus. He healed all kinds of diseases. Blindness. Those who couldn't hear, those who were paralyzed, even raised the dead. What power he had. John 3, verse 2. You remember what Nicodemus said to him? We know you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do the miracles that thou doest except God be with him. The miracles authenticated his message. It proved that what He was saying was from God. For no one could do the things Jesus did except through the power of God. So His miracles confirmed this is the message of our Creator. This is not just another religious message. This is not just another sweet little story. These are the words of our very Creator. John 20 and 30 and 31, John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, and truly did Jesus many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe, and that believing you might have life in his name. John 1, verse 4. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In Him was life. He brought life to us through His words. John 6, 63. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 68. They are words of eternal life. He is the very image of God. That's what Hebrews 1 verse 3 is saying. He is the very image of God. We find it in John chapter 1 verse 14. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In John 14 9, when Philip said, Lord, show us God and we'll be satisfied. He said, Philip, have I been so long time with you and you have not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. John 14, 9. Colossians 1, 15. He's the image of the invisible God. 
John 1.18 says He has declared God. That means He has manifested. He has made God known. Living in a fleshly body in a way we can understand. He shows us what God is like. The love, the compassion, the pity, the sympathy, the justice, the love for truth the love for integrity, the love for what is right, the love for right living, all that that's bound up in Jesus, that shows us what our Creator's like. A beautiful image of God. What was His purpose? What was His purpose? John 6.38 He tells us, the Son of Man came down from heaven not to do My own will, but the will of Him who sent Me. That's His purpose. That's the purpose statement of Jesus Christ. Not to do what I want, what I feel, what I think. My purpose is to do the will of My Father in heaven who sent me to this earth. He never wavered from that purpose. His whole life, He always did what God wanted Him to do. So He could say in John 17, I've finished the work that Thou gavest me to do. Such a wonderful person. Can you believe He was criticized? Someone who never said an ugly word, who never did a foul deed, who never had an ugly thought, who always did what was right and pure and just. Can you believe he was criticized? Unfairly, constantly criticized. They would hang on every word that he spoke to try to find something wrong. How they criticized Him. And yet have you thought about this, through all of that criticism, through those three years He had to live down here. He never stopped doing the Father's will. He never let unfair criticism stop Him from doing what He knew God wanted Him to do. That's the way it ought to be with every Christian. If we do what is right, we are going to be unfairly criticized. The Bible tells us. Matthew 5.10 Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you for My sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for so persecuted the pro they the prophets which were before me. We're going to be criticized. It's going to be unfair. Get that in your head. That's going to happen. That is not to deter us. That is not to stop us. Just like the Son of God. 1 Timothy 3.12 all them that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. doesn't say they might. It says they will. You do what's right, some people are not going to like you. You stand up for right, what's right, some people can't take it. Some people are not going to want to be around you. Some people are going to shun you. Some people are going to mock you. They're going to say ugly things. We must continue to do the will of the Father no matter what they say, no matter what they do. Just like the Lord. Now that was His purpose. Matthew 26, 39. Let us never forget this. He was about to die for my sins and yours. He says, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from Me. 
Nevertheless, not as I will, but as Thou wilt. Not what He wanted, what God wanted. That determined everything He did. We looked at His purpose. Now what is our purpose? Matthew 5.14 You're the light of the world. city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put a bushel over it, but they put it on a candlestick so all that are in the house may see the light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, not you. we got enough glorifying men that they may glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our purpose is to be the light in this dark world. Our purpose is to be like the Savior. 1 Peter 2.21 He left an example that we should follow in His steps. What a beautiful example He left. The best one that's ever been on earth. That example is there for us. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to tell us about this beautiful life. To tell us how to live. Our purpose is to become like Him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We look into a mirror and we see the image of the Lord. And we are changed into the, mirror, into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Philippians 2.5 Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. We study those four books and we see how He thought. And we try to think just like He thought. We try to live like He lived. We try to love like He loved. We try to stand for truth like He stood for truth. He is our example. He is the one we should emulate. He is the one that we should be like. And when our fight on earth is over, then we shall be allowed to lay down our armor from this battle of life and be with Him forever. The religious leaders of Jesus' day, they gave them nothing. Oh, they claimed to teach the Bible. (laughs) What? Everybody claims that. You ever hear any church saying, come here, we don't teach the Bible. Everybody says they teach the Bible. And so did the leaders in Jesus' day. Let me tell you what had happened. They had added so many man-made interpretations of God's law and bound them on God's people. You can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this. You can't fellowship this. You can't fellowship that. Whether it was in the Bible or not, they had hundreds of laws that they laid on God's people. They didn't try to keep them. They weren't consistent, but they laid them on God's people. And it was a burden. Christianity is not a burden. Christianity shouldn't discourage people. Christianity should encourage people. It shouldn't bring people down. It should lift people up. Have this mind in you which also was in Jesus. What was His mind? Hebrews 5, 8, and 9. Though He were a son, yet learned He obedience by the things which He suffered. And being made perfect, He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey Him. He asks us to obey. There is no loyalty to Jesus if you do not have loyalty to His teachings. And He says to be saved, you must repent and be baptized. If you will not do that, 
you are not loyal to Jesus, your sins are not forgiven, and you'll stand before God in all of your sins. You have the opportunity to obey while we stand and while we sing.